welcome to worship this week. We are absolutely delighted that you've come to join us at Bonnyrigg Parish for our worship today. We are thinking a little bit about wisdom today and so I thought we would have as our call to worship some verses from Proverbs. Proverbs 2 says, Good friend, take to heart what I'm telling you. Collect my counsels, guard them with your life. Turn your ears to the world of wisdom. Set your heart on a life of understanding. May we, as a people of God, seek his wisdom in all that we do and pray for God's understanding to impact our lives. Let's join together in worship. Oh, hiya everybody, how are you? I hope you're enjoying your summer holidays. We certainly are having a great time. No schoolwork, no Google Chrome, no anything. We're just having a nice relaxing time. You popped in at a really good time actually because I'm needing a I'm needing a hand. I've got this decision to make. We are going for a wee walk with some friends this afternoon down at Dalkeith Country Park and I can't decide what to wear. I can't decide whether to wear my trainers or my flip-flops. So my flip-flops are really comfy and I'm going to wear a pink top so they'll match. But if we walk far, my trainers might be a bit better and I just can't decide what to do. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you've had to make a choice and you've not known what to do and which decision to make? It could be in the queue at school lunches. Are you going to go for the pizza on a Thursday or are you going to have the baked potato on the Wednesday? What do you do? You can't decide. Do you know who's not very good at making decisions? Struan and Ailsa. Rubbish! They can't make decisions. What would you like for breakfast? I don't know. What do you want on your sandwich? I don't know. And in life, we need to make lots and lots of decisions. And sometimes we make a good decision and sometimes we make a bad decision. But when we make a bad decision, we always learn from it. And even when you're as old as me, you make bad decisions and you learn from the mistakes that you make. One person that helps us make good decisions and good choices is God. And he leads us into making good choices and good decisions about what we want from life. It might not be about choosing what to have in the school dinner queue. It might be making a choice about how you treat a friend or how you respond to a friend or how you decide whether to do your homework or not. And as we go through life, we all have to make lots and lots of decisions. And I bet you've heard this saying before. I say this at school all the time. Stop and think before you do something. So if you've got a really big decision to make and a really important decision to make, what I'd like you to do is just to stop and think, what would be the best decision here? What would God want me to do here? What's the best way to reply? What's the best decision to make? What's the best shoes to wear? I don't know what the answer's going to be, but I'm going to think about it. I'm going to look at the weather and I'm going to think about which shoes are best to wear to the country park. And maybe later on, I will let you know what my decision is. I hope you are all having a lovely summer. We are all missing all of our DJ club children so much. I know that Ailsa is missing coming along every Sunday and seeing everybody. So hopefully we will get to see each other really, really soon and have some fun time and play some games. Stay safe, everyone, and we will see you soon. Remember, make good choices. Bye!
life's first cry to find no bread. Oh, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand till he returns. Oh, cause me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Today's reading is from 1 Kings chapter 3 Reading from verses 5 to 12 At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon During the night in a dream And God said Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for death of your enemies, but for discernment and administrating justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. And so having considered the story of Jacob last week and his powerful dream where God reminded him of his promise to never leave him, Today, we find ourselves looking at another great character from the Old Testament, Solomon, who God also spoke to powerfully through a dream. The book of First Kings is a collection of stories detailing the history of the kings of Israel and of Judah. It starts with the passing of David and Solomon becoming king. Our Bible reading today starts at verse 5, which means we skip over the previous verses where Solomon makes some pretty bad mistakes about which have been edited out of our passage today, where he's making um, idols and getting all, and marrying all the wrong people and getting into all sorts of trouble. However, we start our reading today as he rests and God speaks to him through a dream. God asks Solomon very simply, what do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Now, for many of us, that story will put us in mind of maybe some other stories that are familiar to us. Aladdin and the genie of the lamp, Cinderella and the fairy godmother, the woodcutter and the three wishes. There are many stories that we have heard where the main character is offered some wishes. Aladdin wishes to get out the cave he's trapped in. Cinderella wishes to go to the ball. And the poor woodcutter wastes his wishes on sausages for his dinner. Here, the Lord speaks to Solomon at the start of his reign and asks him a specific question. What do you want me to give you? 
like Jacob from last week, who leaned firmly in his family roots of Abraham and Isaac. Solomon replies to the Lord by recognising the faithfulness of his father, David. He recognises his own inability to lead this great nation. And thankfully, rather than asking for wealth or happiness, he asks for wisdom for the job that has been given him. I imagine God smiling broadly when Solomon says this, good choice, he must have been thinking, you are gonna need some wisdom for the job. I wonder if God appeared to us in a dream and asked us what we would like him to give us, what would we say? Maybe it would be for healing, for ourselves or for someone that we love. Maybe it would be for protection for our family and loved ones. Maybe it would be for money to get out of debt or to have a nice holiday. And for many, we may be wishing that this horrible virus would disappear. I'm sure for all of us, we have lots of different ideas of what we would reply to the Lord were he to ask us. Or maybe your mind might go completely blank and you couldn't even think what you could imagine you might reply. Solomon knew exactly what to ask for. He had such a massive job ahead of him, leading God's people. He knew he wasn't fully equipped, and so he asks for a discerning heart, for the ability to tell right from wrong. This is indeed a great skill that he's asked for. Discerning between right and wrong isn't always easy. The world that we live in is complicated. Sometimes life isn't that clear cut. I watched a panorama documentary recently about how Glasgow dealt with knife crime. Recognising that the lock them up and throw away the key approach wasn't working, but rather taking a more compassionate approach, looking at the pain that often was the heart of why people committed crime in the first place. It showed that taking the person on board and addressing them as a person created much more effective results than dishing out punishment. The stories that we read in our papers and that we hear on the news are often not straightforward stories. And often as we read and as we listen, we need wisdom to discern what's going on. I remember many years ago watching a news feature that has always stayed with me and really impacted me. It was focused on one of the poorest and most deprived housing estates in the UK, which was in Wales. Job opportunities, life expectancy and hope were low. The news report followed a group of frequent crime offenders and it got them involved in a project which sent them over to Romania to work in an orphanage. These boys, much older than their years, seemed to get younger as the documentary continued. As they got on the ferry, they looked just a little bit more innocent and nervous as they were out of their usual environment. When they arrived at the orphanage, they were embraced by the children who ran towards them. And we saw how the lives of these children impacted the boys from Wales. These boys' lives were transformed. This project that sent them there had the highest success rate of seeing less and less reoffending in crime. The children at the orphanage also benefited. They got to hang out with the boys and play with them and see them build and, and construct a better building for them. Everybody here was a winner. The young boys, the community that they came from, the orphanage and all of society. We need to pray like Solomon. 
We need to pray for wisdom. Creative wisdom is much needed in these days. And we continue to pray for our leaders, for those making decisions, for the country and for our church. I remember when Richard and I first met, he told me that his favourite book in the Bible was Proverbs, a straightforward, punchy collection of wise sayings. Solomon's request for wisdom resulted in this fabulous collection of sayings which we can have direct access to today. As we walk into the unknown, just like Solomon, we need divine wisdom. We need wisdom to know how we can be church in these strange and difficult times. We need wisdom in knowing how to deal with family conflict or difficult neighbours. We need wisdom in knowing how to combat our own loneliness as we shield ourselves from others. We need wisdom as we try to parent our children who have had every social structure removed from them. Let our daily prayer be to walk in the ways of the wise. May it be a prayer for wisdom in all that we do. When Solomon asked for wisdom, it pleased God. It was a gift he was happy to give. And it is a gift he is still happy to give to us today. Amen. Dear Father God, we thank you for the amazing gift of prayer. We thank you that we can talk to you and hear you anytime, anywhere. We thank you that you are always with us and we thank you that you love us. We thank you, Father, for the summertime, for sunshine and for rainy days, for early mornings and for long evenings. Father, we remember those who are finding life difficult right now, for those who are bereaved or who are unwell, for those who are lonely or hurting. May each one know your peace. Lockdown has been difficult for lots of people for lots of reasons. Please help those who need to know God with them in a very real way. Help us be good friends and good neighbours. Help us show compassion and kindness to those around us. Help us know ways that we can support those who are extra vulnerable in these days. Loving God, thank you that you are our Heavenly Father, Almighty Creator, who we call Dad. Let us now join together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen.
hoping that this beautiful weather stays in Scotland for the next two weeks as the Purdens are going to take a little break and take a holiday over the next two weeks. But no, you will be in our prayers and you will be well cared for as I've managed to get Pulpit Supply, which is our good friend, the moderator, who's already been part of our services. He is going to take our services over the next two weeks. So I know he'll have some really wonderful things to share with you. And we look forward to worshipping together again in two weeks time. And so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Thank you.